I started making ceramic jewelry about three years ago. Um, I was working at a doggy daycare in Williamsburg and I hated it, <laughs> I needed an outlet. Um, so I signed up for a membership at the Shared Studio in Williamsburg. I, I started exploring clay since it was the first time I got back into the medium since I was five. I took like kids ceramics class. I am terrible at taking direction. I don't like being instructed by teachers at all. Uh, so when I was in the Shared Studio in Williamsburg, I really struggled. Um, I didn't like following the class direction. Everything was super laid out. It was like, today we we're doing hand building and next week we're working on lids for vessels. And I was like, I don't really want to do that. I kind of just want to make stuff. I essentially excused myself from all of the lessons and would go sit in a corner and make whatever I wanted to make. <laughs> and one that resulted in a lot of broken pieces because obviously I wasn't learning the process as straightforwardly as I was supposed to. Um, but it also let me, I think, advance kind of faster than other people in my class because I learned as I went and kind of only concentrated on the things that I was actually interested in. And my perspective on clay is that it should be used for a whole host of things that it's not usually used for. Um, so you see a lot of potters, you see a lot of people who are making little decorative elements for things, but you don't really see a whole lot of jewelry. I take inspiration from nature. Um, you'll see a lot of my pieces, none of them have really sharp edges. There's not a whole lot of squares or rectangles because those aren't shapes that you see all the time. The other thing that I think is kind of interesting about what I do is the material that I work with is stoneware. So stoneware is a type of clay. There are thousands of different kinds of clay. They have different elasticities, different plastic content, and they also all fire at different temperatures, which means they have a different appearance and a different texture. My pieces are usually around a sixteenth of an inch thick, which makes them really, really delicate, but it also makes them kind of unlike anything else on the market. I use stoneware because I feel like it has a little more body than porcelain. It's not quite as precious, um, and it also is a little bit stronger. So making something like jewelry, where it's kind of swinging around your face and you're interacting with it all the time, it's important to have something that's not so brittle that it's going to shatter as soon as you bump up against something. So the interesting thing about clay is it's simultaneously really forgiving and really stringent. Um, so you have plenty of opportunity before you fire to redo pieces. If anything dries out and you don't like something, you can essentially crumble it, stick it in water, and then start over the next day. When we first start working with clay, it's, it's easy. There's no possible room for error because um, you can't mess it up. There are a ton of steps that you need to do to ensure that it doesn't break in the kiln. Uh, so first you have to make sure your clay is well wedged. That's to get rid of all of the air pockets. If you have an air pocket in the kiln, it will explode. Um, <laughs> I use a slab roller to roll out my clay for the next step. It gets it really, really even so you ensure that the thickness is the same all the way across. And then the necklaces are a little bit more organic. Um, those I just cut out with a needle tool to make sure that the edges aren't too perfect and there's some interstices in there that get filled with glaze and kind of glint in the light. and then you have to dry them out. If clay is not totally dry before it goes into the kiln, it will also explode. There's a lot of potential for explosion <laughs> in what I do. Um, after the first fisk firing, uh, which is where you raise the clay to a temperature in which it essentially cures, it gets rid of a lot of the water and also makes it firm enough to handle for the glazing process. So glaze um, essentially is a mix of water and a bunch of different powdered chemicals. What you see when the glaze is wet is not the final color. It's going to be in the kiln because the chemicals react with whatever cone you're firing to. Um, and cones in ceramics are a measure of heat. So stoneware, I fired a cone six, which is about 2300 degrees, slightly under. That heat makes the chemicals all interact with each other as each glaze is a combination of dozens of different chemicals um, and you can have 
every color of the rainbow. You can do metallics, you can do different textures. Glaze is the part of clay that is the unforgiving part. If you mix something wrong, if you apply something wrong, if it fires one or two degrees above or below normal, it's not going to turn out the way you expected. While you have all this room for error before you fire your clay, as soon as you fire it, you're kind of stuck with whatever results you get. So I like to say that clay requires a lot of compassion. Um, it's a material that you need a lot of patience to work with. With clay, there's an element of trust that you have control up until a certain point. So the results when you when everything is copacetic and everything's working together and you get exactly the results you wanted it's like yes i don't have to redo this and now i can ensure that this formula goes well forever but that's not always the case uh, so if there's any mistake in that final firing it's devastating because you could have done every single step right up until that point and then as soon as you pull it out of the kiln and it's not exactly what you wanted or it melts it all over the furniture or something like that it's it's a horrible feeling So I see my jewelry uh, as a, almost a casual alter alternative to precious metals and precious stones. Um, I didn't wear a lot of jewelry before. I was very simple about it. I'd wear like a tiny necklace with like a citrine on it or a similar stone. Um, and my jewelry, I think, can really be worn in any context. I make these huge necklaces that are totally inappropriate for everyday wear and they wear about, they weigh about 50 pounds. So you wouldn't want to wear it to everything. You can't wear it on the subway or people will look at you funny. Um, but then I also have tiny necklaces that you can wear to the beach. It's all about context. So I don't ever want anything to feel too precious or too high end or like it's not attainable for somebody and or unwearable because it's too fancy. I really want everybody to be able to be comfortable in what they're wearing and have it feel like they're wearing a piece of art and a piece of nature.